So I've been checking out your new tracks, and it's this really great mixture of old and new. Like all these influences, but still somehow it feels like you. Was that the idea from the beginning? I don't really, like you say, it almost seems like we've mapped this out, we've planned this, but I didn't plan this, you know? Yeah, I made an album, me and my homie Jeff Eden, just two people in a room making music together, man. It's a special thing, you know? You see, I've made it this far, I'm like a hobo or a hobbit with a ring and a goblet trying to make sure I'm not cut off a bobbit. Arguably, I started in the public eye, like making music. Like I would take all my money from working in the restaurants when I was like 16, 17, 18 years old and go rent a recording studio from like the music shop and we just set up studios with my group at the time and we used to make you know, demos or records back then and then I did that for, I'm still doing that. <laughs> made a mistake and wish that you could take it back but it's too big or too late my lineage is like very diverse my grandfather chinese is irish the spanish is african obviously in there i spent most of my life in toronto i come to appreciate how dynamic and versatile and diverse it is you know that's how i cook that's how my family looks that's how the music that i make is like this album particularly your words is like there's electro in there, there's some rock in there, there's definite hip hop, like there's the, the root and the core of it. Greed is the billionaire that kicks you out to raise the rent. That's just a sampling, impeach the president. Arguably it's a throwback sound, but I like to think of it as a, a futuristic sound. If you listen to Too Bad To Be True, it's this upbeat kind of like 90s or 70s funk jam with hip hop and electro kind of planet rock vibes in it, right? And that I wanted to feel like the feeling of running through a field in the summertime. And we didn't stop between Jeff and I, man. We didn't stop until, yo, this feels like we're running in the sun in the, in the summertime. <laughs> Brenda, think it was Brenda, sleeping with the mailman, we turned to sender. And her friend is the one with tremendous flair, a devilish grin and a world less care. When I walk into the room, they stop and they say, hey, what's up? Growing up in my house, there was always food and music in the house. So there was always a beat playing, you know, always a beat playing. You know, I was operating in the music world, operating in the culinary world. I, there wasn't an example that I could look to, but I remember an epiphany struck me that really is just all entertainment. So it's about accumulating, I guess, a body of knowledge and, and information from the culinary perspective and a music perspective and working on those crafts. In music, you can continue to hone and hone and hone that song and hone it. You can hone it till it's so clinical and you've lost the essence of the feeling of it, right? Same with a dish in, in cooking. You can hone it, hone it, and then you lose the soul and the essence of the dish. I'm always trying to find the sweet balance of the raw energy, the raw intent, the raw idea, and refining it just enough where you still feel that raw energy, but you know that we've spent time building and developing this thing. It's multi-layered, you know? I think that that's really important. And once I achieve that, I stop. But you have to continue to do the craft. Man, 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 dingo. I'm a working stiff, working with. Shoulder weight super heavy, I'm working a lift. You know, that takes a, a great amount of craftsmanship, time, energy, but also realizing that there's adaptation along the way, you know? I'm interested in food and music as the pillars and everything under lifestyle with those things, you know? It's getting hot and the fire and smoke's up. The pressure's really cooking and it's whipping them folks up. Should've known when I spotted them next red. Staring like they wanna lay me out like a bedspread. Of course, the 808, this is the only thing we use to add some hi-hats, little bings. Here, open that. Beat. See, I like this, like the look of that word, dude. It's just so definitive. Emotionally, when I look at the word, I, I don't necessarily think of it in terms of beats of 808 drum first. My first thing is being abused by this life circumstance. Because we beat it. <laughs> what words have I had to eat? <laughs> I'll tell you one word I definitely had to eat is I said, I will never have kids. Now I got like four kids. Like, they're all awesome. I can't imagine my life without them, but I definitely ate those words, you know? 
And I think that just proves that you have to be willing to adapt. Sometimes you gotta do exactly what you said you're never gonna do and you eat your, and you eat your words. <laughs>